So I think this scene from CBS's Elementary is funny because of its absurdity. The mathematician's body's closeness to the numbers is clearly a quirk, not actually related to his mathematical ability. And he might feel the need to strip naked and wear sit on the furniture. Gross. So let's think about that in conjunction with how math learning typically happens in schools in these generic boxes we call classrooms. Empty, they look like this. And with students, it does not often get better. These are my students, by the way. Why are students' bodies constrained in these classroom boxes in this way when we know that their bodies do all kinds of things at one extreme? They touch each other as a result of anger or worse, hormones. At another, they're messy, they get sick, they poop, they bleed. They also play, sometimes quite seriously, other times in good fun, and other times in really silly ways. And I want to briefly show you today some studies that some colleagues and I have done about how bodies are relevant to doing and learning mathematics, in particular spatial reasoning. A lot of these studies, not all of them, were done with this research group at Vanderbilt. Just wanted to give some credit. So first, we looked in lots of different places for how people actually do spatial reasoning in the real world. We looked in professional workplaces. So here we have archaeologists in Peru modeling Incan mobility in a settlement before and after 16th century Spanish colonization. We also observed instructors of a competitive high school marching band design a show for students to learn and perform over the course of a season. So here they're using a software program called Pyware to design a chunk they call the rotating box. And then uh, we went and watched how that high school marching band of over 100 students actually learned and practiced and performed that rotating box. Every time you guys tweet about me, by the way, I'm getting a notification. It's a little <laughs> weird. <laughs> So we also went to skate parks where we observed kids who were often unsuccessful and unhappy in school, but here they learned without adult supervision or guidance complex forms of embodied spatial practices. Um, and lately we've even uh, seen some really neat stuff uh, that folks are trying out in school. So here is a group of middle schoolers trying out multiplication by negative one on a human scale number line, which is an activity that was designed by that guy over there, Max Ray and Malky Rosenfeld. So then the second thing that we tried to do is to design some learning environments that might leverage kids' bodies for math learning. So this one we call GPS drawing, where students acted as a pencil with the earth as paper while a GPS device records their paths. So students worked in small groups, used a map to plan their drawings, then constructed objects by walking, often coordinating several different views and inventing tools to help them make the drawing. So here's a first try of one middle school group drawing the word awesome, the soccer nickname of the boy that's walking. Uh, here's a group of pre-service teachers who drew a musical clef using a rope to help them negotiate the curves of the figure. They then drew it twice more, rotating it, and then the second time translating and dilating it. This group of ninth and 10th graders drew a series of circles and then animated them to appear to be a ball bouncing up and down on the campus lawn. So we think that in GPS drawing, students develop tools that involved new uses of touch, lines of sight, and dynamic placement of bodies. The body is put to work at a different scale and in new ways that give learners and knowers new experiences with fundamental mathematical ideas. Uh, another study that we're doing is called Walking Scale Geometry. Uh, students use everyday objects like rope and lawn flags to construct and work with geometric figures at large scale. So this would be a time lapse of uh, students involved in the activity. Um, so coming up is going to be, I might as well use this time, uh, an example of students jumping rope with a walking scale geometry line segment that they've made, which is twice the length of one of the group member's body. His name is Dean. We notice that they recruit their bodies for mathematical meaning, reasoning about how to jump rope more successfully. You see they keep failing. Um, based on whose body they use to construct their line segment. Later on in this episode, we see how their bodies become integral parts of the figure itself, standing in for endpoints of the line segment, and how they need to carefully coordinate their bodies for the maintenance of these endpoints. We think that walking scale geometry introduces new factors for activity. What's it like outside? On the field, material arrangements are constantly in flux, so mathematical activity and strategy development were subject to the particulars of space-time. What am I like outside? Students took opportunities to play, exploiting mathematical properties of their constructions in the service of their emergent play goals. And what's math like outside? Being outdoors in the wild introduced particularities to mathematics that gave variable meaning to the activity, allowing them to make their own sense and supporting flexible development 
development of problem-solving strategies. So the challenge for us, I think, if we care about kids learning and their humanity, is to embrace the mess, the smells, the hormones, and the specificity of their bodies. All that stuff is a feature rather than a bug of kids. It should be leveraged for learning rather than fixed or erased, even if temporarily. I'm not saying that I know how or that it's easy or even that I'd want to be the teacher standing with a group of kids groping each other while I do walking scale geometry, because I don't know how to handle that, but I think it's important to find a way. So if you start doing this work, or if you're already doing this work, I would love for you to share it with me and with each other, and so we can find some sort of really smart way to handle and make use of all of the mess. Thanks. <laughs>